This podcast is part of the Gunna Geek Network. The Opinion Express may not represent other podcasts or affiliates of Gunna Geek. Check out more podcasts at GunnaGeek.com and get ready because geekiness starts in 3, 2, 1... Welcome to Voices of Defiance. It's a podcast about sci-fi's television show Defiance and all of its universes to include, but not limited to, the video game. We're not experts, just a few fans like yourself that love the show and want to geek out about it. If you haven't caught up to the latest aired episode, you might want to pause right now and go catch up, since there will be spoilers. You have been warned. And now, let's have some fun and get on with the podcast. It's body makeup time! Hello, I'm your host, Stargate Pioneer, and with me is the woman who has no idea why she's on the podcast with two guys that she is. Her name is Shannon. Most of the time, no. Hello. (laughs) And also with me is the man who doesn't mind to be drugged. His name is Sean. What's up, bitches? (laughs) (laughs) And joining us today is another woman, because Shannon feels a little overwhelmed from time to time with us. That's right. I'm, my manliness just overwhelms. <laughs> Ow! Up. Hey! <laughs> her name is Sophia. You might also know her on Twitter as at Arissa Wi-Fi. How you doing, Sophia? Good. Good morning, guys. Hello. Shannon, are you happy now? I am, yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> we have an equal ratio of guys Always. to gals on the podcast, so Shannon's happy. Not that I can't handle you two, but you know. I'm sure, I'm sure you can. So today we'll be talking season three, episode nine, Austin Ato in white. Just a reminder, you can catch us at gunnageek.com and go to our podcast page and find all the great ways to reach us. Just a reminder, we do have a voicemail line, 612-888-ARC1, 612-888-2751. And this is just a little reminder to Libby at Defy Down Under. You didn't send a voicemail in this week. What up with that? Come on. We want to hear your voice. Call in. He wants to hear your voice because he thinks it's sexy. He has to have something to listen to when he's <laughs> Ch- don't, thinking. Don't. Is it thinking? All right. So this you do ep- that anybody, anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Is it thinking? Think. So this yes, episode had a crew on it. It was written by Brian Q. Miller, who has dominion fame behind him he also had a couple of the best arrow episodes that i've seen that he wrote he's also big into smallville and of course a co-producer on defiance and then it was directed by this guy have you guys taken a look at his filmography page yet i have not oh my gosh it goes way back into the 90s we're talking stuff like heroes the you know the good episodes of heroes and <laughs> don't get him started on bad episodes of Heroes, <laughs> which is like seasons three through five. And some people will say two through five, but it's coming back and it's supposed to be good. So we're all great for that. What's and, his name? Oh, I didn't say his name, did I? No. It's Alan Arkush. And he is definitely a veteran of everything. And it's glad to have this pair on this episode because episodes like this, the aftermath episodes, the episodes that after the big boomy things happen and you're gearing up for the next thing that kind of slow drag out whatever this just had me on the edge of my seat the entire time this was an emotional episode it was wasn't it I mean, everyone was crying and i don't know if i like seeing nolan the drunk depressed character this is the first time i thought we saw he was like i don't know human like really he like the things he does have to come out somewhere and we that it finally, finally we gets to him. finally find out where and how he deals with it and that he thinks of himself as a grunt not a general that he's you know that he's basically like everybody else i thought that was awesome yeah he is directly responsible for what 30 deaths on his side whatever it was on the other side five six whatever <laughs> yeah, 12 guys <laughs> an army right okay yeah an army of 12 <laughs> oh, way, way to go round talk anyway yeah. <laughs> yeah so he's directly responsible for a mass killing of his people they had no chance to fight he was a slaughter and never made it out of the caves he's got to deal with that i mean even the father of zero calls him a butcher the, the butcher of yosemite the butcher of defiance i mean at least he's not the butcher of nowhere, but he's got to <laughs> have that on his 
conscious for the rest of his life, however long or short that may be. Yeah, I mean, he should have just listened to Amanda, to be honest. <laughs> and how often has anybody said that? No one ever listens to the women on the show. <laughs> yeah, Amanda's been off her rocker from time to time, too, so. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> It's not a binary thing. It's not she like, was right about that. She was right about it was just too risky to go in. It was a necessity, though. It had to be done. Yeah. And, that, and that's what he's talking about. I mean, in war, you, things happen in war that, that yeah. you're not prepared for. I mean, you are prepared for, basically. But crap happens. It has to happen. He, they had to go take the fight to him. So Yeah. There were people on Twitter who were questioning why Nolan accepted the strange guy so quickly. But... You know, in the heat of battle, he helped them out, and he seemed like he was good. And then maybe just turned the tables on them. But it's like, how can Nolan know? It was just too hard at like that moment that everything was happening. Where at any other time he'd been, he would have been suspicious. Yeah, of a newcomer coming into town. Exactly through the mines, no less. <laughs> well, he didn't know he was through the mines. He just well, introduced he himself know. at the end of a massacre, and the dude helped him resolve it. Yeah. There are no credentials that you can offer in that kind of situation to prove who you are. He just had to take it on faith that he was a human in there to help. But He called him Tex. Uh, I mean... <laughs> Hi, Gabby. Nice shooting Tex. And uh, to be honest, CCBB is quite the actor in the town of Defiance. I mean, he did turn on his own people because he saw the situation present itself. He did all the right things. If we didn't know as the viewer, we would have done the exact same thing Nolan did. Yeah, that's true. After what happened in the Niwa, I mean, that's a pretty elaborate plan. Yeah, I was going to say, kill all my guys, <laughs> and I'm the only one of my advanced party left. That's just good thinking on his feet. Yeah. No, he has no one left to talk. Mm. So, to get back to the start of the episode, when the Indigene was killed, I thought, you know, that looks like Trenna. <laughs> that looks like Doc Yule, but she's not really acting like Doc Yule, but she, I mean... There was a whole thing where last episode I swore that the castie that was on the um, Tox team inside the f fifth column, basically, inside Defiance was Adina, which I still think might be. I don't know. I'll have to go back and look. But this was Yule, and you're like, is that, isn't, isn't? And then later yeah, you find out it running. is. Yeah, but she was killed. And then they played it up. It's not the Yule. They played it up because they get into the, the hospital or whatever, the doc's office, and they said, hey. <laughs> Doc, you here? And you're like, oh, that might have been Doc. Trying to die that way? That's not, that's not cool. You're so confused. <laughs> and then she walked out, and I was like, oh, well, maybe that wasn't Trina or Doc. And really, we should be suspicious because how many times have we seen clones in the in this series? Way too much. Everybody's a clone. <laughs> I think that's where we're going to find out at the end of the series. Everyone's been cloned. I don't know. There were two things about that. One, I totally called it that it was last week that it was Kinsey was the beast. Well, got a question on that, but go ahead. Two, I think Samir had some of the best geek lines <laughs> before he died, <laughs> ever. What's that? Maybe it's a clone. Did maybe maybe you're a clone, and this is the original, and maybe and I'm like, <laughs> they're, they're making fun of us. You know, that's, that's really what the writers are doing. They're making fun of us. Because they do exactly what we do. Well played, writers. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Defiance writers, thank you very much for... Uh, Smarty pants. <laughs> it's smart asses. <laughs> like, SP, we know how to get him. We'll make a character, Samir, be just like SP. Well, and come on. We'll kill him. Well, <laughs> well, honestly, how many episodes did he last? Oh, he was... Now, you want to talk about red shirt. Now, we have defined <laughs> CCBB as not a red shirt. Samir, total... Re he he was designed so that Doc could kill him. I don't think he's dead. I didn't get the feeling he killed him. I think she just knocked him out. I mean, he was coughing, yeah. but I think she just knocked him out. Okay, I could be wrong. We'll see the body next episode, one way or the other. <laughs> A burning trash barrel she's warming her hands <laughs> over. How you doing? Just great. <laughs> Biodisposal. Yeah, but she... Uh, was anybody else disturbed by the the way and then what happened? Uh, like, she knew what would happen after the control rod was inserted and everything, and she's like, look, you want to live too much, just... Lean your neck over or I'll snap it. Puts it in and then Docule is like, you know. Robo puppet. drone. It's yeah. I wondered about that. Why did she give up so easily? It's just the same questions I got about Berlin. Why did she leave so easily? I don't think she did. I think she, I think. I hope that her master plan was that she knew that that was going to happen to her. And maybe she's taking that knowledge back and knows a way to counter it. I don't know if she's completely under her control. I think she is. Hey, Sophia, what do you think? 
I think she was really scared. I think they're just showing how really scary the Omek are, especially for the Indo gene. And I think she just didn't want to die at that moment. <laughs> it was just stupid to go down there by yourself. I think she was really controlled. I think she was controlled and, and I think she just, she knew that Kinsey was going to kill her. Yeah, I think Doc's too smart for that whole thing to happen. She gets down there, she gets to the spores, and then she sees the lab in front of her, and it's like, oh, nothing good's going to come out of this, or whatever she said. And <laughs> She yeah. walks down those steps, and the only thing I'm thinking, isn't that where they grew Kenya? <laughs> They're using the same tank. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they probably did, yeah. One clone after another. <laughs> Why not? It's a cloning pod. Got the stuff down there. Yeah, but I was giving Doc Yule a lot of credit. I figured that when she was doing the surgery that she had reversed hacked a lot of stuff that was going on in the OMAC computers, and I didn't think she was going to go down there so cavalier, but she did. I know. It was kind of stupid. Yeah. So we either have her completely under control, where she's going to start doing... Well, no, actually, that she can't even do that anymore, because she was supposed to be under Kenya's control, but Kenya's on ice, so she no longer has that issue. How come she can't just take it off? Did Kinsey say you cannot take it off? No. No, she said, serve my best interests always. So I guess that would be in her best interest. So I don't know. Yeah. So would her best interest be fighting the Omek daddy for Kinsey? Because she didn't say serve the Omek best interest. She said serve my best interest. Right. So now that now that he's he's put her to sleep. You would think that if she's serving her best interest, she would be coming okay. after him. Let's, let's go back and talk about that because we got in an argument a couple of podcasts ago about exactly how did Stalma and Kinsey get up there and it was VR. And all of a sudden, she's actually transported up to the ship by the red light. So, yeah, by the tractor beam. <laughs> it is possible. That was my big thing. And I'm like, okay, wait, foul, foul, foul. Wait, <laughs> how did she get the hell back? Why is she? I'm yelling at the TV. I'm like, you said you couldn't do that. You know, so yeah, I was upset. Nifty little red tractor beam. Exactly. I'm like, if you could teleport yourself up there with the little red disco ball, why the, the hell? The difference was is that Tefkin didn't do his little clicking noise. Tefkin can do it. See, now if Bit could do that sort of stuff way back in Tron in 1984, <laughs> people could have gotten out of the Matrix. Things would be different now. <laughs> yeah. It would have been but easier. He wouldn't have had to go. This is a big computer and destroy it with the disc. I the mean, big door. I mean, that is a big door. <laughs> Love that movie. Maybe he only has the ability to put somebody to sleep in there, but he can't actually control the ship. You would still have to get the body up to the ship. Yeah. And they didn't with Stalma and Kinsey before. Well, so I'm saying I think that Tefkin has that ability. Not, oh, so not you Kinsey. think it's like daddy's toy. The not- special cool. purple balls get it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I see. <laughs> it could be. I know he had red beam, so this... <laughs> My purple plums are powerful. <laughs> Does anybody think Conrad is just a little off the mark for an OMAC? I mean, he's like totally bought in hook, line, and sinker. He's lonely. With... He's a lonely purple Well, he's no, got I his whole he's... family up in the ship. And I think he realizes that the reason that they were driven to extinction and the reason that they were in the situation that they are is because the Dread Harvest failed for all intents and purposes. Because once their food left... You're a lion in the middle of the savanna with nothing around to eat. Doesn't that sound awfully familiar, like the Wraith on Stargate Atlantis? That's the same. It's the same. Same, same concept. Yeah. 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 Same thing. I mean, it's sci-fi. They could do whatever they want to with their own properties. I mean, like, like if you want a winning strategy, <clears throat> the, the theoretically a winning strategy, look at the Borg. Okay, the Borg don't destroy; they assimilate. Right, so they basically make copies of themselves, and any entity that they run across that's significantly technological and intelligent, they just copy them, steal it, and now it becomes you. I mean, it's like the Mongol horde or something. Join or die. Take your pick. I mean, that's basically the principle. That is a winning philosophy. Not we eat you. Let's kill all the civilizations <laughs> until you know they're so messed Wiped up. Wiped out. That, there's that nothing left. There's nothing left. Or okay, these are the only things we do, or this is the only food we eat, and now. That they're gone because they left. <laughs> We're screwed and we have to go in the big board cube looking thing. So I I think he sees, that, that, to get around to my original point, I think he sees that the way his people have always lived is not going to work anymore. Or he's just enchanted by the Magic Chivo. The Magic Chivo has changed <laughs> some minds in this show. Yeah. And pancakes. <laughs> and pancakes, yeah. I mean, the dude makes pancakes and suddenly she's like, oh my goodness, let's <laughs> Let's hang out in the love nest. You know? <laughs> Suncast in the chat said, he's got to have his pancakes. And Andrew Garza said, I thought the pill just gave Stalma in 
her in head video, which, okay, so the pill's a difference. Kinsey didn't swallow a pill. That's why she was able to transport up. The pill prevents you from transporting, and it's just your consciousness that goes instead. Ah, very smart. But way smarter than me. Way, way smarter <laughs> way than smart. Sean. Way smarter than Sean. <laughs> Everybody's smarter than me. <laughs> way smarter than our normal argument here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Omex just a little off, and he's like, oh, the, they'll treat me like a pragmatist. No, they're not. They're going to kill you. They're going to wake up and f- figure out how soft you are, see all this food that's laying around the planet, yeah. and go, screw you. And they're you. hungry, I'm sure. Well, and they gonna, I think he's trying to keep them. He's purposely not awaking them. Well, what is it, like 1,400 years? We did the math like last season or whatever, like 1,400 years for them to travel over. That's a long time in between meals. Yeah. I mean, I can't go three hours in between me. I can't imagine going 1,400 years. I mean, ugh. And that's a huge population to say, oh, I'm just going to tell you guys, hey, we're not going to kill the your food down there. You yeah. would be outnumbered. But you can eat pancakes instead. Like, <laughs> uh, maybe like 10% will be like, okay. With blueberries. You know what? <laughs> what I find funny with Tefkin is that when they first introduced the Omec to Caesar, they're all talking about how terrifying as a race they were and how everyone that saw him come into town were completely terrified mm-hmm. and now he's walking through town attending funerals he's going to the market he's buying groceries well, nobody bothered. back home to stama he's not bothering anybody he saved human trena yeah. yeah yeah one he's not bothering anybody two defiance has seen weird crap i mean <laughs> they used to it, i guess everything <laughs> goes down in defiance so they're used to horrible after horrible after horrible. And one purple guy yeah. who has a bad reputation just isn't that bad right now. They had Rom Talk at their doorstep. They had Earth Republic last year. Every day sucks for these. They don't have a good day in <laughs> defiance. So, yeah, I mean, one purple guy wandering around going, I used to eat people, but I feel much better now. <laughs> that doesn't bother <laughs> anybody. They don't care. They care about Stama. Oh, yeah, they're kind of upset they're, with her. They're ticked at her, and rightfully so, I think. And that goes to people's mindsets. Tefkin, whose people destroyed their ancestors and had dread harvests and everything, can walk around town freely, no problem. Stama and her husband blew up the arch, got pardoned for it. She returned to town, wasn't, as far as they're concerned, any, in any real danger, and they're pissed at her. I can see that. I understand where they're coming from on that. They're eating rats, barbecued rats around a trash barrel, and she's got this big, white, beautiful house and a, and a handmaiden who yeah. tries to make her son as happy as she can, and we <laughs> all know what that means, and her serving her and all that kind of stuff. So she's rich in town, and yeah, I'd be pissed at her, too. Did you see the look in Indina's eyes when she was talking about going over to the Macaulay house to take care of... Alec. I was just thinking that, no, oh, yeah. we don't need you coming in and interrupting us. <laughs> she could interrupt us. Yeah, exactly. She's like, my magic Chivo there's, time with your son is being interrupted by you coming home. There's a gun near the front door. He'll shoot you. Yeah. Don't come. Yeah. <laughs> I want him all to myself. See, there's a little bit of treasure doll coming out in her finally. Oh, I like yeah, that. Oh, I, I yeah. saw that. <laughs> Amanda, whenever she was being so rude, or rightly so, I guess, but I can't wait for Amanda to face when we see if we see day tech come back i'm pretty sure he'll be back oh yeah he's not dead no he's not dead he's got his charge blade he can take care of himself even with one arm the hell bugs out there well, are not gonna not get him. he was laughing you know we didn't even see any hell bugs this year have we not mm. that i remember no. i mean it, no. it, i guess it's like zombies when it gets too cold out because they're exoskeleton they can't walk around or anything so <laughs> they're exothermic <laughs> yeah. holy crap it's cold maybe they're hibernating or something <laughs> yeah no they just literally freeze and they can't move and then they thaw out in the spring and then oh watch out <laughs> well they're related they came from frogs so i mean that tracks yeah that's my point you know, which that's fine clearance i haven't caught in any reference to yule's frog love this year so i'm wondering i haven't either and i've been sad well, about that we have we had a little, i have had a little bit of conversation with her <laughs> Clarence is his name. Yeah, I know. I named him. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to get Trina back on the show. She's been doing a phenomenal job. I put out a tweet on the Voices of Defiance account saying she's been doing a great job and a lot of people retweeted it and stuff. So. She's not. Yeah, and she favored it. So, yeah, I really, Trina has probably the best acting. Well, I mean, you got to. Oh, man. We've had some fantastic yeah. acting. This entire season but has been. She does yeah, need a sharp. snuggle. Her, uh, Doc Yule needs that thing out of her neck and a giant snuggle from from hair braid. You want to snuggle braid everyone? I said from side braid. I want to go. With, we all know who I want to snuggle. That is why I've made no secret of this. I mean, Me she's too. 
Yule's made some improvements. She's got the bling on the back of her neck. She's got glowy lungs now because, you know, she went down there with the spores. That line was talking about, this is bling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that girl can have bling. <laughs> and man, it's just been preoccupied with the invasion and stuff. And Yule didn't mind because she used it to blow up stuff. So she's happy. But, you know, now I, I think after this whole Omek thing gets taken care of, I think she's going to need some braid time. Yep, I believe it. Snuggle with the braid. See? Braid snuggling. We need more of that. What do you think, Sophia? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Doc deserves it at this point. <laughs> Just sorry for her. <laughs> Doc deserves a braid snuggle. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Actually, I think Amanda does too. I think Amanda just needs to snuggle with anyone. She just looks so. Amanda wants to snuggle with Nolan. Tired this season. <laughs> I think her and Nolan have got to get together at some point. I think they will. Yeah. It, it's I want to. I want to see Arissa and Alec. They're so cute together. Yeah, next season. I say next season, not this season. Oh. Well, I will also say that I was completely wrong about Zero's father. Yeah. And I thought that was. That whole story arc and everything and that move through was, was very cool. So heartbreaking. I'm wondering, though, I mean, and, and he played it very well, and it's like father to father and, and all that stuff going on. But I am wondering if they're going to put Lucy in the game, because that would be awesome. Lucy. Yeah. The gun was oh, named Lucy. Oh, yeah. wouldn't that be awesome? Just put Lucy, because you two could run around and blow stuff up with Lu Lucy. I'm home. <laughs> they Sophia, could the gun if, there. if we got a Lucy gun in the game. Oh, yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> that would be great. You'd, you'd have to, to be able to shoot straight, though. We can shoot. All oh, these two are bringers of death now. What is your level in the game now? Whatever. Your ego rating? Yeah. Uh, is three something. 3,000 something? Yeah. Well, it's not anywhere close to hers. <laughs> what are you at? Yeah, five well, something? <laughs> yeah, that's because I'm an addict and I'm on all the time. <laughs> She's like, I, I have to go places to get well. I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you mentioned the game, I have to go now. <laughs> 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 There's a raid I should be going on. Alcatraz is calling when mention me. Our, when you mention the game, we have to mention what we do and who we are. We are part of the White Sack Angels clan. That's because of you, Sean. Sackers. Sa we're Sackers. It's all, it's all Sean's fault. <laughs> Everything is all Sean's fault. <laughs> Everything is all <laughs> the sackers. I love my sackers. Okay, so and we can shoot, and neither one of you can. And you've never been on their SP with us. No, because I barely have a rig that can do this. <laughs> Let's face it. Oh, your gear! You can't come play the game with us. Yeah, you can play it. My gear does both. Well, my gear would <laughs> be able to do both. I'm on a crappy laptop. Like you can do it. <laughs> Uh, okay. You haven't seen craptastic game setup until you've seen Libby's setup, and she plays. <laughs> she plays without a mouse. She plays without a mouse, man. That's well, uh, a touchpad. Oh, click, 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 click. Yes. <laughs> you play with a touchpad. Oh, geez. <laughs> and she reached, I mean, she reached like two thousand ego with no mouse. Wow. It's funny because whenever whenever we're shooting, when we're, like we're surrounded by bugs. I had to stand and protect her feet because she can't jump and shoot at the same time. <laughs> I, I was going to I was gonna ask about the jumping. So you guys have regular jumping contests, right? Jumping contest? No. <laughs> no, you get on top of things. Oh, oh, oh I, I, yes, I jump with, with the car, I do. Oh, you with do it with the car, car now. Okay. I jump off everything. <laughs> what? So what have you jumped? Hide off, I try to get to hide off the roller. <laughs> do you put the roller on top of a roller on top of a roller and try to jump the bottom one? They go right through. They won't stay. Yeah. I can't jump off the bridge, though. The Golden Gate Bridge. I was going to say, didn't you put the uh, roller on the top of the Golden yes. Gate Bridge? How did you even get it up there? Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Voodoo. Now, you, your character has to climb up the ladder that was hidden for most of the, my, my time playing the game. I didn't know the ladder existed. And then you call your car and it winds up being on the yes. top of the... Oh, for crying out loud. But you got to call your... <laughs> you got to be pointing a certain direction because if you're pointing towards out, your car falls. <laughs> it'll just go, it'll materialize <laughs> and just drop into the ocean. I oh, <laughs> dropping into the ocean. Water is not cool in the game because it's like... <laughs> you don't... I played I the game... find it all the time, though. Long enough to know that if you are in the water, you're dead. Like, it gives you no... No swimming ability whatsoever. Oh, you no, know? You, you can oh, swim you can until swim. things turn black on you. And then yeah, you can... if you start swimming into deep water, if if it's just like a little yeah. shallow pond or something like that that you can see across, you're fine. If it's a channel or a bay or anything like that, you're dead in 15 you start, seconds. You start swimming through it and all of a sudden the screen cuts getting black. Yeah, or the, yeah. the freaking sea monsters come and get you. Have you had those happen? <laughs> I tell you what, I cannot stand, even in the game, for the hellbugs to chase me in the water. I scream like a little girl. 
<laughs> I can't. Oh my god! <laughs> take the and controller. Take the controller. Oh, take the controller. I can't. Libby was laughing so hard at me the other day because we're 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 shooting. I'm like, well, let's just see if they're gonna follow me, and they did. All of them. All you see these little red dots following her Barbie all over the water. It scared the crap out of me. I hate it. <laughs> You're such a big girl. <laughs> you in, big powerful girl. In you. more ways than one, but not with bugs. <laughs> so. Talking about hunting, Nolan shoots a raccoon and then realizes he's a little too on edge. <laughs> She's like, "Really? Ask him." <laughs> Happy hunting. <laughs> I rerun that like three times. Him? Who's he? Who's she talking about? Him? Him? Oh, the raccoon. Oh, yeah. the raccoon. <laughs> or what's left of him? <laughs> Pieces of raccoon. After three shots with a battle rifle, not much. Just See a lot of red. Somebody should have picked up the raccoon. That's, it's got to be better dinner than a rat. Oh, I'm sure like Votan Redneck. Mm-mm, this modified fiddle's right here. A raccoon here. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so, okay, so we've waited so this far, and Shannon hasn't said anything about it, so I'm going to bring it up. The tattoos. Oh, I was waiting. Yeah. I was waiting. We, we were getting there. <laughs> we were getting there. Okay, well, we've gotten there, so come on. Let's hear it. <sighs> Jamie. I don't think that, were they tattoos? I thought they were just like <laughs> henna drawings. Well, they yeah. were henna drawings because she went to the market to get ink. Well, right. Yeah, but that could have been tattoo ink or like regular. I didn't know if that was I like drawn on. I don't think it's a or, permanent thing. I mean, yeah. I because she had the she had the ink blotter thing well, in her hand. Well, it's like one of those whiteboards at work. You know, you, you write <laughs> up on it <laughs> and then just draw it and just erase her off. You, know, <laughs> you erase it and then it's still there like months, years later, the faint echo of what you wrote up there and then it just builds up over time and then it's all just one big background colored mess. Yeah, that one happened with her. She gets in the water too much. Daytac comes back and he's like, what the hell is that? She's like, it's my Chivo tat. They were heady days. I don't want to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's a question. It, it, I was asking this earlier, uh, yesterday. If the Castathans are all based off the, their religion and their cultures, everything is white. Why did they choose black as... As mourning? Mourning. I mean, well, I know it's mourning, but that's a human trait. That's a human custom. Being sad because someone died is a human trait? Even elephants are sad when they're, they're kid <laughs> Why dying. Elephants? Why did you jump to elephants? I'm just uh, uh, animals, and I read a story. All right? <laughs> <laughs> this is how my brain works. You guys should know this by now. <laughs> what I'm saying is that I understand why we would use black, but they've done everything in this series based on how and you've heard Jamie talk about it, how based on that they don't want to have the human customs, that they want to have their own. So everything that they do is white, even down to the bathtub that they go into. So I was just, yes, I, just I, I just think it's a cool contrast that they have, but now she has black. And the opposite of white would be, you know, because the, their whole white thing is, there are sad, four lights. is, is light <laughs> cleanliness. and uh, No, <laughs> there are five, four. I'm buying into it. There are five. <laughs> Four uh, Just make it stop. There's five. I see it. Stop. Stop. Yeah, I don't care. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're talking about we're talking about a Star Trek Next Generation episode, which Jean Luc Picard is being interrogated by. What Cardassi- was that race again? No, I want to say Cardassians. Ca- Cardassians. I want to say Castithans, but it's Cardassians or not, Kardashians. Not the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> They're being interrogated. By, like totally, you see five lights and totally saying, <laughs> "Was down in Beverly Hills the other day, and I bought five. You see five. <laughs> it's like just shoot me, just shoot me now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be fashionable. There are five totally Jimmy Choo lights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we thought that was shoes. They make lights now. You're making my head hurt. <laughs> it's the way my brain works, y'all. Welcome to my world. No, so, um, I totally. Why is she just turning purple? <laughs> she can't even talk. You know, she's, she's going after the pur- the purple rocks, right? The purple stones. <laughs> 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 So I think with the the Castafin thing to bring that around, the Castafins they see the light and white and all that as the purity. No, stop it! You don't you spit Doctor Pepper all over yourself. Doctor Pepper and casting and Sean don't go well together. I know from personal experience. A <laughs> uh, bloody nose too, by the way. And all of a sudden, you like to bring it back to the light. You know, bring it back to the light. Well, the light. It's <sighs> okay. Listen to her speech when she talks about you know the the lower levels yeah. are the the what are the base and everything and then the upper levels the upper layer are the light and they everything is based on whiteness and light and purity so when they're sad when they're unhappy when they're mourning of course it would be the absence of that that's why she was like I want the darkest ink you have because they're in mourning they're unhappy they're sad 
That's the contrast. That's why she used black ink. That and it looks super hot. Yes, it did. <laughs> Side boob. Side boob. I, I just think the whole episode was, was sad between Nolan. I don't know. I wasn't sad when Kinsey was making out on Nolan. I was like, you lucky bitch. <laughs> That was like the one scene. Everything else was so sad. That's all you need. And depressing. <laughs> That's all you need right there. But even then, it was ruined by a growl. So. Love you, Kinsey. <laughs> <laughs> he just wait. He just wait till we get her back. She's awesome. What are you talking about? She I get, am not get her back. I, I question mark. I you know the way that people have left this season. This could be. Oh it. no, she's she's up in the ship in the steel hot pocket. She's fine. She'll <laughs> she's gonna pop out when the microwave timer <laughs> cuts done, and she's gonna be great. She's gonna be a, a Captain America, right? Yeah, regular Steve Rogers. Ooh, he's a cutie. <laughs> Shannon would have been down with Haley Atwell when she's like, ooh, I'm just going to touch his chest. <laughs> I'm just going to, ooh, that's very nice. <laughs> Shannon's like, ooh, that's very nice. I, I like that. I like it. Reminds me of myself with my shirt off. Please. <sighs> Please. Maybe the scrawny one before he got in the hot pocket, <laughs> too. <laughs> Thank God there's no camera on you. <laughs> Back to the episode. <laughs> All right, so I'm on my third Dr. Pepper. Can you tell? <laughs> I do think, going back to what I was saying, how sad I think it was that the whole speech that Stalman gave at the end was, was pretty moving. Poor character. Who's been through so much. For her first night home from the purple purple love nest. I think the two were kind of sparring back and forth a little bit. I oh, yeah. detected a bit of hostility in that. I think not only does she realize that her position has been compromised. I mean, in more ways. I mean, she has no more data right ever. now. More than ever. Right. Right now, she has no day tech, no support system, no friends, no inner circle, and nothing. Not even her son. All she has is Adina, which would be enough for me. Yeah, it would be enough for me. Just rec- let the record show. But um, She doesn't really have Adina. <laughs> well, in the ways that I'm thinking of that are important, she has Adina. But uh, I think... In what ways are you... No, you know what? I don't know. Naked tub time. <laughs> no, never mind. I don't want to know. I of walked course, into that that's one. A, that's the only thing. <laughs> Seriously? She has, she has, How long have you sh- known me? She has Tefkin. That's the only one she has. That's the only friend-like person she has in the entire town. Yeah, and that's, that's I don't know, that's tenuous. She knows better. Yeah, I think she, at this point, uh, dude, I think you're totally right on. I think at this point, she knows but better. But I don't think she has Adina. I think she's always known better. I think she's been using Tevkin the entire time. Well, they used each other for the, the, they both used each other. For nesting purposes? <laughs> yeah, too. <laughs> I, yeah. And then, but I think after she saw the ship, I think she really... She turned around in her opinion. She knew her place, actually. I think she was like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> well, she knew after she saw the ship that she can't yeah. outsmart him, that he was such a bigger fish in her little scheme, yep. and she had no shot of beating him, so she better play nice. Yep. So, Sophia, what was the best part of the episode to you? Oh, wow. There's so many things. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I really, li- I really did like the tribute that they did for the, for the militia. Yeah, that died. That that was really well done. I thought. Um, at least it, you know, in some shows, it's just kind of like ignored. But I like that they actually showed that, and they showed the sadness and and the loss, and uh, you know how Nolan was feeling so guilty. I, I thought it was really well done. I thought Grant did a great job. And then um, I like that we found out about the clones and why Kinsey made them. Mm-hmm. Um, like when when we saw that when we found out that she was doing clones, I thought, oh, is she like making an army? And then when we found out that she was actually doing it for a hunt, I was like, oh wow, that's An army of yules. <laughs> interesting <laughs> army. Yeah, I'm like, what is she doing with? with Bring these us side braid. Bring us side braid. I had those little axe picks, like little dwarves out of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> She's that the was cool. guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't know, but yeah, she wanted to do that. Although. Wasn't there a part where Kinsey was, I think it was when she was in with Nol- yeah, Nolan, and then she heard the scream and then she ran away. So it's not just Kinsey that is running around hunting these things. Yeah, she's released one or a few. Oh, I don't think so. I think it was she heard the growl and she knew it was daddy and oh, she yeah, was that's caught. What it was. That's what it was. It was yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it, was, it was Tevgin that he saw. Yeah, it was saw. Tevgin and... And oh, I, I gotta go. I'm busted. You know, that's like a kid just yeah. rolling up in the driveway with his dad's car, going, "Oh, dad's like sitting on the front porch." She knows she's caught. Daddy was yeah. calling. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's what that. <laughs> go was. to your room. <laughs> <laughs> go to your tube. Go to your hot pocket tube. Speaking of Tevgin, I have a question. How come 
he didn't take out that rod thing from Yule. Do you think he'll do that for the next episode? I don't think he knew it was there. Oh, I think he knew it was there. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, she was demonstrating the control she had over, right. her, over her, so he knows it's there. And I think it went both ways. I think he could control her a little bit, too. He just chose not to. Oh. Yeah. So he wasn't yeah, it was, actually. It was. I was like, hey, wait a minute. I thought you were like turning into a good guy. Like, why are you letting it oh, go? Think, <laughs> what is yeah. he going to do with those clones? Hmm. It's a good question. Yeah, I, I don't think he's as good a guy. I think he's just trying to preserve his new vision of the way his people could live, and he thinks Doc would be useful to do that. But for it'd be him. nice to have some food in reserve. I think he's got yeah, plenty just of that. in case. The man's a wicked chef. A little Yule on the Barbie. Yeah, I mean, he's, he could... He, Doc Yules or, you know, pancakes. Either one. I think it'd be fine. But it looks like if, you know, like what Kinsey was saying, how how they feel after they hunt, it's like, you know, it's part of them. It's part of their instinct. And if he goes and takes a little piece of Yule and eats her, like, he might go off the deep end again. He could totally turn around. Yeah, he might be consumed by it. Yeah. Because the way he she was explaining it to him, you know, and how like she started off as, okay, I'm going to make some clones and just eat the clones. And then all of a sudden she went and she killed those three other guys. Like you said, it consumes them. So if he takes a little piece, he might not be able to stop. So that's really dangerous. Like me around a Hershey bar. Yeah, I was going to say me and Oreos. <laughs> you uh, and chocolate. You and kind. Hers- yeah. Reese's Pieces with you. Yeah. I, I know you. <laughs> yeah, Reese's Pieces. Yeah, that's like that would be about the silly because it's like I'll just have like three. It's fine, and yeah. then suddenly I've had three handfuls, you know, and then suddenly <laughs> there's like bags. bag missing. We keep we keep a bowl of Reese's Pieces that all of us, even Carrie, we go all four of a dig into that bowl. It doesn't last long. I <laughs> buy multiple bags at one time. It's very bad. It's like, oh, we just have this bowl of crack here out in the living room, and we're just going to casually ignore it while we all eat. Ch- chocolate? Yeah. Exactly. Chocolate? <laughs> yeah. So what do we have predictions? So I think we're, we're almost, I think we're far enough along, and we can give a little bit of predictions. We have four episodes left. Four. 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 Lights. Next week is called When Twilight Dims the Sky Above. What is up with these titles? <laughs> They're into poetic license. I had to look up Ostiano or Ostinato oh, or however you pronounce it. I don't know it. what it means. I don't know what it means. I'm I'm into looking up, but I got it's a repeating distracted. idea, a rhythmic pattern, usually in music. And I'm like, okay, so this was talk after talk after talk after talk. I guess I don't know. Clone after clone after clone. Mm. <laughs> or it could be like a Battlestar thing. It happened before. It'll happen again. Well, we are already on Earth Two or whatever, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, but I, I don't know. It, there's a lot of ways they could kind of go with this, but the fact that they've kept that ship above orbit, like the Sword of Damocles, I don't think that is going to be an insignificant portion. So I'm guessing right now we're going to have to kill a bunch of them, Omek. So we're going to have to find a way to do that. Of course. Just to thin it out, because I think there's more Omek on that ship than there are people alive on the planet. What do we think about Berlin? You think she's going to bring back help, or do you think she's just going to walk back into town saying, okay, I, I've changed my mind? I don't know. I don't think we're going to well, see Well, now her. she's going to find out that the Rom got killed, so now there's no threat, so she can come back. We'll see. To a town that hates her? There's no reason for her to come back. Yeah, <laughs> she can't come back yeah, and save true. the day. <laughs> yeah, but, but we didn't have a good exit for her, so I don't think she's gone. I think she'll be back. I'm just trying to figure out why and what would she be doing. That was just, it was a very strange exit. It was just kind of like, oh, see you guys. I'm in love. Yeah, that wasn't enough. This epic love of this random guy we just saw. So here, here's one. We've lost so many characters this season, important ones and then side characters. Do we think we're going to lose any major big ones this season? We already lost major big ones. It's yes, possible. I'm talking about we've lost. No, like, a, like Nolan. Anyone else? Or Arissa. You know, it really depends on if they really think there's going to be a season four or not. Yeah. Yeah. They could end it any number of ways and they could do some nifty cliffhangers and probably will with it anyway. But I don't know. The original Doc Yule, I think, will die and we'll wind up with a clone next season. I didn't think about that. Hmm. I hope not. But that's a good theory. Because they come out there. Kinsey already told you that they come out like making jokes and cracking lies and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know, man. <laughs> that's come out just like her. Yeah. So yeah, I think you kill the original and you wind up with a clone who <laughs> discovers new things and experiences. But now next you have multiple dots. And maybe like 
romances side braid so she's less twisted in a bun uh, next, <laughs> Could be. next season. Maybe she'll grow out some hair of her own. You never know. Hey, there you go. Can I grow hair? I, she's Only a doctor. on their Chivo. She can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is she really an indigent? Let's check her out. Is there uh, one way to figure it out? The collars and cuffs match? No, apparently not. There's a landing strip. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> At least you weren't drinking this time. You didn't spit anything all over yourself. Trying to follow that up with my prediction, and it's just not a good transition. <laughs> He's like, there's nowhere I could go with it. Damn it, John. <laughs> just not good. Yeah, so uh, they're obviously going to go into space. They've done all that CGI. They're not going to let it lie. So the ship's going to, they're going to go back up to the ship again. I don't know if you it'll think? be destroyed or if I they'll think. try to drive it somewhere else or maybe uh, crash it into the moon you know what i i think what the hell would they do in the i ship think no one is going to discover anywhere. that it's there he already knows it's there team. they know that there's a ship yeah and, yeah but i want i think he's going to try to take a team and go up there whether it's to destroy it or you mean there's other purple girls up there who look like kinsey how <laughs> do i get on that ship seriously <laughs> i got nothing else down here i got nowhere else to go <laughs> <laughs> What are the reasons would they have? I'm, to I'm wondering if if Yule is gonna help Kinsey get out because now she's under her control and Ooh, it would be that. in her It'll... best interest to get out of that pod or wherever. This she... one's gonna be nice. I thought of that in the. Uh, of course, she can, but she's gonna have to find out that Kinsey's up there. So she's gonna have yeah. to learn that she's somehow. Not directions from her, she might go, go looking for again, or maybe she's telepathic. It's in her best interest, it's in Kinsey's best interest, to release all the other Omec from the ship. Exactly. That's where I was going to go with that thought. Like, if Kinsey gets out and she takes everybody out. <laughs> right. Yule goes up there, tries to get everybody out, and then mm -hmm. finds that Kinsey's up there. And Yeah, okay. I see. I, I think most of Kinsey's problems would be solved with a good, solid snuggle. That's your <laughs> answer for everything. Just with Kinsey. <laughs> just with Kinsey. <laughs> Nicole, just for you. Just for you, Nicole. <laughs> I mean, seriously, no one has ever made him change the logo, and he's done it. No one's ever asked. <laughs> I've been asking for several things, and I get nothing. He even voluntarily, at the end of season two, said, you know, SP, if this show actually gets picked up, because we didn't know it, it was picked up for season three, if this show gets picked up for season three, I'll do a new new logo. I mean, he did that on his own. I was like, okay, you know, whatever. I can keep the one or get a new one. And then season three rolls around. I'm like, hey, Sean, um, you, you mentioned that you were going to do a new... Oh, no. I don't have time for that. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> and then Nicole's like, you know, we need a little purple on that logo. <laughs> Boom. 15 minutes later. I'm like, come on. <laughs> it didn't even take that long. I'm sitting here watching him do it. He was start he had started it before we even finished talking to her. Yeah, that's true. I did. <laughs> <laughs> the power of Nicole. Well, you you are one to talk, Miss. I'll get a tattoo if we get season four. I will. Oh my! I didn't hear about this. How did you? Huh? A tattoo for season? Four. Oh, because your husband got one on a previous podcast. Now you have to get one for this, dude. I've already I already have a tattoo. Yeah, but I not had for one a show. Years before he did. Yeah, but tell him what you're gonna get. A defiance tattoo. <laughs> She's gonna get a lawkeeper badge uh, if they get season four uh, on on her chest. Where it would normally go? I asked for Hell it no. on her left boob, but she is su surprisingly resistant. Oh no! Why not? <laughs> Sensitive area. I call you. Uh, my nickname for you could be BS Boob Star. Oh, you stop it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on, Boob Star. I change it in my phone and put a little logo on it and everything. Boob Star's calling. Hold Ooh. on, y'all. I've, I've got to take this. Andrew in the chat said, "No one is going ark hunting before the ark has fallen." I see. The Ark Hunter returns, and it is literally the only Ark left up there, so yeah, that'd be cool. All right. You guys got anything else to say about the episode, Sophia? Nope. nope. I think we covered everything. Sean, Shannon, do you guys have anything that we we'll need You really to want to hear more of my thoughts? Uh, well, we're done. Okay. <laughs> All right. So going on to a little news, uh, came up to some ratings. Of course, we're talking about season four. The possibility is Defiance going to get a season four or not that came up this week. And somebody put together on the TV series finale.com a list of all of the ratings of the shows for the first eight shows. And this is only the 18 through 49 demographic, not the entire demographic. So it's a little smaller than what we've originally stated, but there is a noted increase 
started at about 1.1. It's up to 1.2 when you figure in the uh, Lie Plus seven day. So, uh, and that is only in the demographic. It's about double that when you consider all viewers, which I don't know if 2 million is okay. I know like I podcast on another show, Arrow on the Starling Tribune, which can be found on the Guinea Geek Network. And the premise of CW was to get 2 million viewers a week on that. Now, the production value on that show is arguably maybe a little less expensive than the CGI intensive Defiance. So I'm not sure if two is a good share market for them to have or not. I don't know. Sean, what do you think? Mm, well, a lot of it, I mean, it's a CG market, but uh, it's a lot of the, the upfront costs, like building the town and getting a lot of that stuff is kind of built in, but there's a lot of makeup on this show and there's a lot of CGI and I'm just not sure if it's worth it. But the thing about this show is it's got a huge women's audience. And there's not a lot of sci-fi that can boast that particular claim. I mean, it's not that women don't like sci-fi and everything, but this is very female-friendly and female-heavy. Most uh, of of the the main characters are female. Yeah, and it's very well done that way. And I think that's one of the only ones that sci-fi has got like that. So I think it's it's strategically important in that way. All that to say, I, I don't know if it's enough or not, but... I'm going to believe that it's enough. Because I want to season four. <laughs> well, I'll Pink say happy thoughts. the female demographic does play because CW definitely has a female demographic to it. And Arrow and The Flash are on there and yeah. they bring the pretty on those shows. So if you have strong female characters that people are flocking to, I can see that happening <laughs> on sci-fi as well. Yeah, the pretty. Sophia likes the pretty on that show, too. So another ratings that i ran into was defiance it's getting a percent increase anywhere from like 80 to 120 percent so it's on on friday night we talked about sci-fi friday quite a bit it's on with killjoys and dark matters now a strong strong friday night lineup but in this day and age with delayed viewership possible on dvr online uh, you can get it illegally through itunes legally or amazon streaming uh, shows I think in general it's getting better yeah i well i think that the live plus seven ratings are really it's really imperative for friday night shows so uh if you're getting 80 to 120 percent viewership increases that is great i just don't know if there's a way to monetize it so sci-fi is just gonna have to figure that one out well hopefully it won't take half a year to to let everybody, let the viewers know whether we're going to get renewed or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hope yeah. it's a long show. time. And them. Sophia, you like the pretty? Is is that true? Yeah. Okay. Who doesn't? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so I mentioned before we are on a network, the Guinea Geek Network. There are other shows on there, like the Starling Tribune, like the Crimson Comet on the Flash show on the CW show Flash. But last week was a Guinea Geek podcast number one hundred and six. And Chris Farrell, for real, whatever you want to say his last name as, was sick for the week or possibly zombified. So it was just me, Stephen, and JS, and the three of us apparently had a great time, got a lot of positive feedback from that. So you can go find that on the Guinea Geek Network. That is episode 106. And we talk everything from Star Trek to collector's editions, games, and everything else. It's a great geeky podcast. So there you go. Moving on to some feedback. Luca Corso gave us a great picture on Facebook. It was a picture of Stama getting her hair brushed, I believe from season two, might have been season one. And the caption, the meme on it was the other white meat. There you go. Thank you, Luca, very much for that. We also got an email from Castor Vega, and it was subject to Castanado in white. Oh my God, they killed Doc Yule. You bastards! We found out what Kinsey really wanted with Doc's stolen genetic code. Dang, was hoping for a look into Doc's mass genocidal past within her genetic code. Nope. Kinsey was just hungry and created some zebra Yule cakes to snack on with her fancy Omec 3D printer. This was an email? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And it was sent to you. So Uh, Uh on Twitter, we got a couple of kickbacks from Billy. Really great to have him on the podcast last time around. Billy, thank you very much for spending your time with us. Really, It was a fun time. And he had a couple of name corrections. So first he said, correction, Lieutenant CCBB gun, a.k.a. Christopher Beckman. Hashtag I want my BB back. Hashtag gone BB gone. Hashtag defiance. Then he. <laughs> That's way too much fun. <laughs> I know. A few days later, 
He said, had another name pointed out, Lieutenant CCBB Gun slash Christopher Tex Beckman. That's yes. it. He likes the Tex. <laughs> Me too. I told him so. <laughs> Not biased, though. Rashonda Donaldson also tweeted us, and she said, just discovered your <laughs> podcast. Love it. Although there are a lot more references to sex with aliens than I'm used to. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's, hot aliens. There's a lot of sexy aliens. So, yeah, that kind of tracks. Yeah. Particularly on this show. And then at Jesse Rath News also tweeted us and said, listen to Voices Defines interview with Jesse Rath. I absolutely loved it. Filled with such good stories and laughs. Newcomer to you guys' podcast. I am now a subscriber to them through iTunes. You all are great. Well, thank you very much for subscribing. We really appreciate that. At Hungarian, or at, well, Hungarian Daydreamer, and I'm, I have no idea how to pronounce it. At S-Z-I-L-M-A-R-I-L said. Hungarian Daydreamer. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. The at Voices Defines podcast with Billy is amazing. I will miss BB. Yep. And then Andy Migna said the scene talking about this up this week's episode, the scene with three mirrors was nicely staged to capture both their reactions. Who comes up with such ideas? Well, that would be the Defiance writers, Kevin Murphy and the gang. And they do a tremendous job with that. So we really appreciate that. All right. Thank you very much for all the feedback. We really appreciate it. You can catch us on Twitter. You can catch us at Facebook. You can catch us on our voicemail line, 612-888-ARC1. 612-888-2751. If you want to send in an email, go ahead. That is stargatepioneer at gunnageek.com or feedback at voicesadefiance.com. You can catch us there as well. And if you can't leave a voicemail, like you're international, like Defiant Down Under, go ahead and email me an MP3 file. We'll, we'll play that on the podcast. So next week, as I mentioned before, we'll be talking about Season 3, Episode 10, When Twilight Dims the Sky Above. We may or may not have a special guest with us next week, too, so stay tuned for that. And that's all I have for this week. Sophia, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking your time to uh, be with us on the podcast. Thank you guys again for the invite. It was really fun. And honestly, you guys have been doing such a great job this season. I've been looking really forward for each week's podcast and it's like the minute you post it i'm like i have to watch it i have to listen to it <laughs> right now <laughs> even if it's like one in the morning <laughs> you've been really <laughs> Which, doing a great job let's be honest it usually is about one in the morning because that's when i can get to it <laughs> sorry you all still playing the game around that time so that's cool so yeah thanks and uh, you're welcome back on the podcast anytime just give us a heads up and we'll throw you on okay thank you thanks honey <laughs> shannon do you have anything you have to say Come play the game with us. Ah, yeah. That's yes, play, play. White Sack play. Rangers? White Sack, White Sack Angels. Angels. White Sack Angels. There you go. And as always, we're going to turn the podcast over to Sean for the last 30 seconds or so and uh, just hope he doesn't make an FCC violation. So go ahead, sir. In your future dealings with Defiance, just remember Chivo Landing Strip. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Chivo <Landing Strip. laughs> Bye, y'all. See you next week. Buzz the field. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to Voices of Defiance. If you want to get in touch with us, you can catch us on Twitter at Voices O Defiance. Email us at feedback at voicesofdefiance.com. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Voices of Defiance. Swing by our website, www.voicesofdefiance.com. Or send us a voicemail on area code 612-888-ARC1. That's 612-888-2751. This podcast is not affiliated with Sci-Fi, the television show Defiance, or the Tryon video game Defiance. Music titled after The Apocalypse by Schnee Schnook and Rocket Easy by Sound Rogue can be found on Pond5.com. Catch you next time and watch out for those hellbugs. Hey, Sophia. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. And we're going to do the ultimate test. Sean? Yes, I can hear her. I can hear Sean. Woohoo! It works! It's working! <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I have not needed a Skype call. <laughs> <laughs> multi track, dude. Multi track. You heard the one machine. I had the other machine going, and then there's this machine, and oh, by the way, my Surface RT is actually streaming the chat window. So, wow. I'm cool. Hi, honey. Hi, baby. 
I almost thought she was talking to me. I thought, <laughs> I better not talk to you, I, sir. I better, better shut up. Shannon is the only baby for me. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Not honeys. Yeah, I was going to say, we are completely <laughs> superfluous to this conversation, sir. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That will be the last time I address you. <laughs> okay. Go on, only Shannon. John, you can go off with whatever. SP, just keep recording. That's Please not normal, is you know. right? That's normal. Yeah, that's normal. <laughs> You'll be happy to know. You'll be happy to know, SP. I do not have my harmonica in the room with me, so there will be none of that. Oh, God. Oh, good thing I have that clip from the other night to put in the outtakes. Then. Ah, uh, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> Who's is that? Sean Who's with the harmonica. Sean is playing the harmonica. Oh, this, right. sorry. I thought no, no. It's all good, that. dude. I, I thought that. you couldn't hear that. It's a harmonica, dude. How could we not hear that? <laughs> it it vibrates sound. <laughs> Your wife is a lucky wow. woman. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> I seriously just came a little bit. <laughs> when did that happen? Actually, there was a lot of requests for the recording for the pre-rolls for Legends. They're like, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Can I have that whole thing, please? I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, we had a good time. It was like six people who just didn't give a shit <laughs> about what we were supposed to be doing. <laughs> I had <laughs> one, pur one purpose on that podcast, and that was to actually get the new pre-rolls recorded. I knew it was going to be podcast? trouble. What podcast? Oh, your Legends? Yeah. Oh, legends. Okay. The five-year anniversary. Yeah, which Beef and Op really don't like doing that stuff. I, I know. So I knew it was... I, I knew Wing didn't have the balls to do it. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be on the cast. We're going to do it. And Wing's like, Doesn't okay. Doesn't have the Canadian balls to do it. <laughs> I love his accent, though. The, the Montreal. I don't understand. Yeah, that's all he sounds like. He's better when he's drunk, though. <laughs> Definitely. We were all a little loopy, except for SP. We were all pretty much lit. I had an, enough so caffeine like, to light up. About? Texas, though, I'm telling you. It's a long we week. Tell. That's the, what do you think about that? I think it's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys are yeah. dicks. <laughs> that was the best ever, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was just, I, at first I was honored. I'm like, y'all actually listen to the podcast. And then I was like, now you're just making fun of me. I'm just going to go home. <laughs> yeah. If we don't make fun of you, we don't like you. Exactly. <laughs> make fun of you all the time. Yeah, exactly. Shannon makes fun of everybody. Everybody. No one is excluded. <laughs> Except a few. But he goes by Sandrock. As a matter of fact, he's, he already has his ATR 2100. Do you work for Audio Technica, like on the side, or is it you just get a commission for every one of those you sell? Or? Well, okay, let's back up a second because <laughs> I wanted a cheap, good sounding now USB microphone, and that was it at the time. I got it for 40 bucks. So, you know, hey, you can't go wrong with that mic. <laughs> I give you crap. It's the one Shannon's using right now. Oh, you got your I mic? You for my, f yes, I like it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, she's been using it for the last couple of weeks, actually. Awesome. I got it since you sent it to me. Yeah. she She's like, SP sent me this one. I like it better. Let's use this one. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Do you, do you, uh, Suncast, it's the, uh, the 2100. It's the Audio Technica, uh, 2100. A AT2005. It's, uh, oh, is very, it, is it this one? Ooh, yeah. I didn't realize we're live yet. Yeah. yeah. We're live. We're live on Mixer. Yeah. I, I popped it. Yeah. It's the 2100 or the 2005, the 2100. It's the same mic. It's just one's black and one's silver. And, uh, yeah, Shannon sounds much better on it than the Behringer that she was la, 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 la. using. Not at the moment, yeah. though. I don't have a voice. I'm still. I tried the mm. uh, the AT, but I I still keep going <laughs> back to my Sennheiser because I know how to I know how to uh, balance it and I know how to EQ it. So it's like, right. yeah, I keep back to that. Yeah, and Suncast. In case you're wondering, I use the Sennheiser E935, but I have a mixer to go through. Sandrock will not have a mixer with him, so he needed a USB mic. So yeah. I don't know if we'll uh, do a podcast or not, but uh, he has expressed um, wishes to do so, and we're gonna see if he can find a topic that he he will stay on target with, because we all know stay on target. We all know with podcasting, longevity is key. If you can make it over that seven episode hump, you're probably gonna last a couple of years so i don't know if it's seven episodes i'd say it's probably closer to 10 or 20 if you can make it 10 or 20 you'll make because i've seen a lot of fade out at 10 you know like or 
or they'll do a season or half a season and go, this is work. And then stop. <laughs> it's a bunch of work. Podcasting is work. It's a <laughs> bunch of work and expensive. Can get expensive, but it can get blindingly expensive. Yeah. But if you're into making your life easier, you spend the money. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. I've spent a hundred bucks on a used mixer. It's been great for three and a half years. Yeah, but it. I, okay, so you spend a hundred bucks on a mixer, forty bucks on mics and stands. The stands are probably more exp- the most expensive part of your system. No, the Sennheiser was expensive. I, I bought the Sennheiser now. Okay, that so was, that was a hundred bucks. So that's all expensive. Now, if you were going out and you're, you're inexpensive, but if you were going to and go the out, monitors were one hundred and fifty. Okay, yeah, it adds up. It yeah. adds up. It adds up. I'll my, give you that. My original studio, I think, was what did we cost it out? Around six hundred dollars to get me up and started. And now you can do the same thing for the cost of an ATR twenty one hundred. I'm thinking all this technical junk is like porn to you, right? Yeah. No, porn yeah, is, is still yeah. porn. porn <laughs> yeah. He's like, no. <laughs> Let, let's, no, uh, they don't have boobs. <laughs> <yeah>. So I'm, <laughs> I'm fairly certain. Just check it because I get to see your face while you're talking, and you look, you look pretty excited. He gets flushed. Oh, oh, mix minus. Oh, it gets me <laughs> hot. Oh. 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 <laughs> In case you're wondering, this is my ATR 2100. <laughs> I didn't need to see that. He has a Ziploc bag fetish. That's really what it is. <laughs> <laughs> In case the place floods, I want to make sure it's okay. <laughs> I want to make sure it floats. Sophia can't even see it. I don't I think it's like, a good thing. No. <laughs> I can't well, see. You're not missing anything. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about gear this whole time, so if he's yeah. like, just start says, the you always, you always start small one podcasting. It's so easy to spend money. You damn right, it is easy to spend money. I have to physically cap it because because otherwise you'll be like, man, those monitors at Guitar Center look great. I really need those. I want the microphone. You cannot have I want that SB seven. I want it or SMB oh, seven. SM seven B. Yeah, nice. it looked like a nineteen forties microphone. Yeah, it's with the red it's the limited where it's the. The it looks like a 1940s mic, but it's still got the SM7B guts it? in it. Oh my god, it was ridiculous! <laughs> like three thousand. <000. sighs> it was no, it wasn't money. three thousand. I mean, you could get no, a new was, one for no. like four fifty. No, it was uh, $3. it was three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Yeah, it was three ninety. It was on sale for three ninety nine. It shall be mine. No, what? you do not need it. <laughs> I didn't say I need it. I said I want it. There's a difference. <laughs> I'm looking I want at it. Electro Voice RE three twenty package that BSW. Warehouse has for 370 oh, yeah. shock mount mic and pop filter for 370. So, uh, Sophia, what kind of mic do you want? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, one I'm good that with has this phone. I'm all right. <laughs> She's like, I'm good. <laughs> all right. Slight hangover. No. What? Slight hangover. Slight hangover. Oh, lightweight. Lightweight. <laughs> Did you, I, did you just call me a lightweight? Yeah, I sure did. You're down in, you see, you're Shall down around I me. tell them the story? We don't need to tell that story when we're recording something. Oh, yes. There's a story. Oh, I've seen that B1 Suncast. Yeah, I've seen that mic before. The story of you having one margarita? It wasn't. Look, first of all, Jeremy made it, and you know he's a bartender, and he cheated. Second of all, it was a big margarita. Okay, so everyone that's listening has no, to hear the story. They don't have to hear the story. He had one margarita. One. Look, people, it one. had the alcohol of like three, and it was huge. And my friend and I are continuing making some drinks in the kitchen, and Your I friend, look over. friend, the professional bartender. Yes, he is, makes great drinks, and you suck. Because you had one, and next thing I know, I find you giggling in the living room, and I go in to see what's going on. I was watching TV. And it wasn't even on. <laughs> you were staring at the TV. There's nothing on. <laughs> it was a hysterical show. You can't. Don't call me lightweight. You are a lightweight. You are the same as me. I could drink it. I can drink you can't out drink me. You've always actually been able to out drink me. That's not an accomplishment. That's not. It's not. It's like saying I could totally slaughter my toddler at basketball. Of course you can. As you're sitting on the couch, you start snoring through the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Lightweight. How you doing, baby? <laughs> yeah. I always. I'm a sexy beast. <laughs> As you're snoring, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Suncast. Yes, they probably did drug me. I drug them all the time. <laughs> She's like, how do you think I get him to shut up? I've never seen him happier than when he has gear problems. <laughs> it is $400 headphones. <laughs> They're not $400. I wish I could have seen your face. SP, I wish I could have seen your face when Nicole was correcting you on the way to say her name. Galicia. <laughs> Prob- probably was the same Galicia. as mine. Like, ah, 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 ah. Galicia. <laughs> you know, 
that should have been you that she was correcting because of all of the stuff that you've gotten wrong over the years. She just went for me. I know. It was great. I was a target of opportunity. Yes, Mr. Shataco. <laughs> <laughs> You guys didn't even stop him. <laughs> um, we it was go. like we Shataka like five times. <laughs> He's like, Shataka. I'm like, dude. Did you just flip us off? He did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. We're, we're going to get going here. <laughs> Waiting on you, honey. <laughs> Waiting on you, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, go. You're like a little girl. I love you. We got to watch that movie again. We got to watch that movie. It's Ocean's Eleven, if, if for anybody who doesn't know. Are, are you guys done? Can, can we get this podcast started sure. now? We're waiting are on you, you sure? seriously. All right. Three, two. Uh, Voices of Defiance. Uh, heck, I'll just email y'all. Dang punk kids and their fancy techno babble worse than the uh, Ebonox back in the 80s. Oh, my God. Ebonix. The, Ebonix. Thank you. Ebonix. See? Ebonox, <laughs> sir. <laughs> What closet have you been locked in? <laughs> Rocky <laughs> Ebonox. <Stucko. laughs> Even I knew that. <laughs> well, 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 thank you, Sean. You're going to read the rest of the email, right? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I don't have that crap pulled up. <laughs> Unprepared. Unprepared, I say. I claim to be prepared, but I do know how to pronounce Ebonix. <laughs> All right. Ostinato and White. Voices Defiance number. Ah, oh, heck, I'll just email you. Y'all dang punk kids and their fancy techno babble worse than that Ebonics back in the 80s. The At Voices Defiance podcast with at Billy McClung. At, at Billy McClan. <laughs> this is so going to go on the outtakes. <laughs> What's great is I can see your face when you do this. It's awesome. I'm just flustered today. So we're just going to leave it at Billy. It's amazing. <laughs> He's like, okay, I don't know where to go from she's, here. She's 21. She turned 21 this week, and we went out to a Mexican restaurant because she wanted to do tequila shots. And I'm like, uh, okay, this is not going to be good for me. Dad? Be because, well, yeah, she wanted her first ones to be with her mom. And of course, I was invited. And she's like, yeah, I want you to do a shot too. And I'm like, that's not going to go well. You, you know, you realize yeah. I'm allergic. <laughs> so I took a Benadryl ahead of time and was like, <laughs> prepared for the suck. <laughs> so the younger daughter's actually taking video of us and uh, we get, we get it. And you know, with the salt and the lime and the stuff. And uh, so it was a three, two, one ready to go. And I went down the hatch, did the salt, did the lemon. And that was it. Uh, no big deal took me about three seconds the girls and i know you can actually see me sophia you can't but they can see me the girls they they were like <laughs> <laughs> just started sipping <laughs> like no just just chug slam it. it just slam it <laughs> and they're like we can't come on the, we, the gag reflex i'm like oh god we're going here now <laughs> oh by the way i don't know did, did it sound better on your end this week this yeah. is this is the cleanest sound I've ever gotten from No, it's it's markedly better. Okay. <sighs> Time well spent. All right. <laughs> uh, we'll Are you liking the board? You like the board? I well I'm still getting to know it. Maybe at second base level at this time, get to feel the, the goods a little bit. But uh <laughs> I there's a lot I still need to know. Like it's got a L R button which kinda um yeah, acts I don't like even a, know what it does. a main, but it's not a main and so I need that. And then the augs for it, I had a heck of a time cleaning up the sound from the Augs sends. I had no idea. So I went completely with the inserts, which I should have been doing with the other board, but I couldn't because that was dirty sound. And then mm -hmm. I got, like, you have everything plugged into your stuff. I have now everything plugged into the board. So, like, the music that you were listening to was coming from the HP laptop, and I could hear it on the speakers, which I couldn't before. So... It's it's uh, yeah. That was always weird. How you're like, I can't do that. I'm like, I swear to you, you can. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> so I'm very curious how this board, in what condition this board is going to come back as, and we'll just see. I, I'm very hesitant to give it to anybody because I think it might be inherently messed up. But it might and like giving people problems or something. Right. Broadcast has been successfully terminated.